Hi, I'm Robin. Hi, and I'm Bill. Welcome to Not the Retirement Show. Today, we're chatting about five factors to consider when deciding where to live in retirement. Wow, this is a really loaded question, isn't it? Sure is. There's so much involved with with this. Um, obviously, lifestyle is, is a big part, but I think probably number one in most people's list is money, is the financial uh, aspect, the financial issues associated with uh, either staying uh, where you are or or moving. So um, I think if we I think if we look at those in perhaps maybe three categories, I would imagine. Uh, number one would be stay in the main house where you've lived all your life. Uh, don't move, just do nothing. Uh, I'll come back to that in a minute. Second one would be uh, stay in the main house, but perhaps uh, buy a vacation home, maybe even buy an RV, I suppose, uh, so that you could spend part of your time, your retirement years away from the main house, away from home, which is always uh, good in some respects. And then, of course, the third one is downsizing. I mean, that's a huge issue. I don't even know where to start with all of this. I keep hearing that song in my head, should I stay or should I go? Yeah. But I don't want to make a joke out of this because this is in a very emotionally charged discussion. In fact, we're going to have a whole nother video coming out just on the emotional aspects of downsizing. So let's stick to the money discussion for today. The first one you talked about is staying in your house. And I think a lot of people just fold their arms and say, you know, they're going to be taking me out of here in a box. There's nothing that you can do to get me to move. And they really haven't run the numbers on this because there is a cost associated with staying. You know, just off the top of my head, Bill, uh, there are your annual taxes, both uh, state and local and maybe federal, depending on where you live. Um, there are home repairs for keeping up the dwelling that you're in. Face it, if your roof is 25 years old, sooner or later, you're going to have to do something about that. And then there's the one that nobody thinks about, retrofitting your house to be safe for you and workable for you as an elderly person. Well, I think... You're right, you know, uh, uh, but I think the big one is the mortgage. Uh, now, if you are in the fortunate position that you've worked very, very hard and that you either cleared off the mortgage before you retired, therefore you, you've got no mortgage payments now in retirement, or at the time of retirement, um, you, you had your retirement fund and you used part of that fund to pay off the, the balance uh, of, the, of the mortgage, uh, and then obviously, again, you don't have any mortgage payments. That's the big one. Um, and really, that gets a, gets you into a whole range of discussion about income and expenses and cash flow, et cetera, uh, in the retirement years. You know, can your income uh, in retirement sustain uh, the mortgage payments if you still have them? Uh, that's number one in the list. That has got to be sorted out because chances are, uh, that's the biggest expense that you, you're going to have uh, on a daily basis, notwithstanding things like, as you correctly say, you know, repairs and so on and so forth, because as you're getting older, probably your house is getting older as well. So th those sort of things will, will pop up. But that's it. Th those are the financial sort of big issues regarding, you know, staying in your main house. Now, you just talked about uh, the idea of having... I'm going to call it two dwellings, the home that you've been living in for most of your life, and whether it becomes a, a retirement home that you have in a warm climate or an RV that you're thinking of traveling around in or a timeshare, whatever the case may be, those things sound amazing if they're in your budget when you first retire. But let's think about this big picture long term. Are you really going to want to be tied to going to the same place every year, year after year for the rest of your life? And initially, your answer might be absolutely yes. But when you think about uh, the di difficulties of travel, when you think about uh, the stress of major health concerns like the world's been experiencing lately, 
are you really going to be able to go to that place as often as you want? Are you going to want to go to that place as often as you think? Same thing with the RV. The RV is a great idea initially when you're in your early retirement, you're in really good health, you want to be behind the wheel of the big rig, if you will. Who wouldn't like that? How long are you going to really feel like driving that really big, heavy vehicle as you get older? Are the kids really going to want to spend time with you there? Is that going to be a realistic scenario for you long term? Does it make economic sense? Yeah, I think the vacation home, I think the point you're making are very good because I think the vacation home issue is, um, you, you know, you're going to the same place um, every, well, I was going to say every year, but maybe you want to do it two, three, four, five times a year. Um, but does the boredom factor kick in? So no, all, all you're going to do is you take you know boredom at home because you're in retirement uh, and move the boredom to a different place, and it happens to be the same place uh, that you go to time after time after time. I don't think that's an easy uh, you know decision. Uh, I mean, obviously the alternative is to is to find a place that you like to go to geographically. I mean, a, a nice location and. You know, I mean, if you're only going to go for one month a year, perhaps, then just rent something um, so that you don't have to worry too much about the financial consequences. Clearly, you obviously have to pay the rent for the month, granted. But when you add up all the numbers associated with staying in your main house, we've talked about the mortgage, whether that's there or whether that's not there, repairs and just running costs, etc. Uh, you may find that, you know, a monthly rental, um, once a year or maybe twice a year if, if, if you want in different places uh, makes an awful lot more sense. I think the RV point is, is, is the same. You know, the, the, the big advantage of the, of the RV is you're not in the same place every night. Uh, well, you, you could be. You could choose to be, obviously, but, but you know, you, you can move. So if you, go, if you want to go to this side of the country this year and that side of the country next year, you're, you're in pretty good shape. But you're right, you know, as you get older, uh, you, you know, driving a big vehicle like that. And some of these are huge. Uh, I love the RVs, by the way. <laughs> you know, if I could get one here, I would, I would have one here. I, I absolutely love the RV concept. But again, you've got to look at it, looking forward. If you're going to spend a lot of money to buy uh, an RV initially, uh, at the front end, shall we say, of your retirement years, as you move through retirement, um, you know, maybe you paid it off, obviously, or maybe you do have some loan, associated with that you're still paying but there comes a point in time where you say you know what i just can't be bothered i just yeah i just don't want to and that applies to the vacation home just as well i know people who who have bought in different places uh particularly in the states and you know the notion about as you rightly say traveling and whatever sort of thing but that'll come back um you say to them so you go into the house this year and they go yeah i don't know you know they get bored I couldn't agree with you more. And now let's not forget the big scary elephant in the room, downsizing. Now, as I said, we're gonna have a whole separate video that talks just about the emotionalism associated with downsizing. So let's just talk about the finances. Here's where downsizing might make sense. Supposing you had a large family and you're sitting there watching this in a three or four bedroom house, and it really doesn't matter if you're in the suburbs or in the middle of a big city, if you're in a property that large and your mortgage is either small or paid off, economically, financially, there's an argument to be made for selling that property and getting so much cash out of the proceeds of the sale that you could have a a new uh, property to live in for most of the year, a small place to go in the winter time or on vacation, and even some cash in the bank to help pay for your daily expenses as you go forward in time. Leaving aside the lifestyle issues, which, as you say, we'll talk about, you know, in, the, in, in an upcoming video, uh, the financial side of this is very simple. It's very clear. If there is the ability to release equity, and equity simply means the value of your house today, less any liability. So if you've cleared off your mortgage, 
you're, you're pretty much free of liability. So you've got, you know, hopefully you've got pretty good equity in the house. So it's called equity release. So you're going to release that equity. You're going to take the cash, in other words. Now, obviously, you don't sell until you buy, uh, you know, a new place. But that's a big, big thing, because what you're going to have to look at then is that, you know, if, if you sell your existing property, um, then you, you've got a new property to buy. So out of that equity release, the first thing you have to take out is the cost of the new property. You know, prices have all gone up, so you, you would want to be careful that you're not, as it were, taking good equity release, but then discovering that when you go to the new place, depending on your likes and your dislikes, you you know, you're going to spend a big chunk of that, um, you know, to buy the new property. Because, we, as you say, what you want to be able to do is to buy the new property, really uh, take some of the, the balance of the equity release in cash, put it in the, you know, in the investment account or whatever, so that, to provide income for you over the, you know, the ensuing years. So the equity release uh, calculation is by far and away the biggest financial issue that you should fa- that you would face. As we say in all of our videos, Bill and I are not certified financial planners. These are complicated things, but that you can have a good outcome if you take the time to go and discuss all of these things with a financial expert before you commit yourself, before you make decisions. Well, if you're still listening, we must have said something helpful. So please subscribe to our channel and we'll talk to you again soon. Take care, everybody.